Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to value a stock and find its intrinsic value. Figuring out how much a stock is really worth and not paying too much is so critical to being a successful investor. So we'll be doing a few examples with real businesses. Today, I'll be doing valuations for Apple and Tesla stock. And I'll also be sharing my intrinsic value spreadsheet with you so you can download it and have a play around with it yourself. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. So the reason we need to do a valuation on a business is really simple. In order to know what price to pay for Tesla or Apple stock today, we need to figure out what the underlying business is worth. There's a few ways to go about this, but I find most super investors like Warren Buffett, Nick Sleep and Monish Pabrai all use the same method to value a business. Something called a discounted cash flow model, which is the model that we'll be using today. Before we get into it, it's worth mentioning that valuation is the final step in my investing framework. Before I value a business, it has to meet all of my requirements for being a business that I understand, is a high quality business with durable competitive advantages, has top notch management, and has a long runway for growth ahead of it. If a business has all of these qualities, then I try to figure out how much is worth and decide how much I should pay for the stock. All right, let's get into the first example. So this is my discounted cash flow spreadsheet. It might look really complicated, but the only squares that we need to do any inputs for are the yellow squares, and the calculator does the rest for us. So the concept of a discounted cash flow or DCF model is pretty simple. All you're doing is taking the company's current cash flow, which you put in the first yellow box, and then you grow those cash flows out into the future using a growth rate. This is where understanding the business comes in because predicting growth rates requires you to have a fairly decent understanding of the business. Next, we need to discount the future cash flows back to today with a discount rate because cash today is more valuable than cash in the future. I keep it really simple and I use 10 for quality businesses and 15 for more risky and speculative businesses. Next we have our terminal value or terminal multiple. This is a tricky one so try to think of it like this. Imagine you're buying the entire business and you hold it for 10 years. Then in the 10th year you sell the entire business. The price you sell the entire business for will be a multiple of the cash flow in year 10 and that number is the terminal value or terminal multiple. Again, to keep it really simple, I use a multiple of 10 for mediocre businesses, 15 for high quality businesses with little to no growth, and 20 to 30 for really high quality businesses with high growth. For example, Tesla sells for a much higher multiple than Ford. And the reason is Tesla is growing its cash flows much faster than Ford is. So it makes sense that Tesla sells at a higher multiple despite them being in the same industry. And finally, the last input is the shares outstanding. When we calculate intrinsic value, it gives us a fair value for the entire company. So to get the per share intrinsic value, we need the shares outstanding. So if a company's intrinsic value is 20 billion and there's 1 billion shares, then the fair value per share is $20. Easy peasy. Now let's do an example for a real business. And the first business we'll value is Apple. To do this, we need two more tabs open to get the inputs we need. The site we'll be using to get our financial data is Hypercharts. And for the shares outstanding, we'll be using ticker. The first number we need is Apple's current free cash flow. If we go to Apple, the first thing we need to hit is annual to get the full year numbers. Scroll all the way down to cash flow. And you can click on the other two to make them go away so it's nice and clear. So for the full year 2021, Apple did essentially 93 billion in free cash flow. So now we go back to our spreadsheet and type in 93 billion. Next, we need our growth rates for what we think Apple's free cash flow will grow by over the next 10 years. So we have one growth rate for the first five years and another growth rate for the following five. I personally think Apple's massive growth is slowing down. So to be conservative, I'm gonna use 10% for the first five years and 8% for the following five. For the discount rate, cause Apple's definitely a stable business, I'm gonna use a discount rate of 10%. And for the terminal multiple, because Apple's a high quality business with slow growth, I'll assign it a terminal multiple of 15. And finally, the last figure we need is the shares outstanding. If we check ticker, we can see their shares outstanding is 16.33 billion. So we just fill that into the last yellow box. Now the calculator has done the rest and it's given us an intrinsic value calculation for the entire business, which is around 2.1 trillion or around $133 a share. So that's my pretty conservative estimate of Apple's intrinsic value, which is pretty far below its current price. Of course, this is just my own estimate and I could be way off about the growth rates. And this is why understanding the business is so important. 
another investor could see a completely different story with Apple's growth. But as you can see, actually using the intrinsic value calculator is really, really simple. It's getting the most accurate inputs is the tricky part. All right, let's do another example for a business with much higher growth ahead. Let's try to value Tesla. In order to get Tesla's free cash flow, because they haven't released their full year 2021 numbers, we need to do it slightly different. It's also good to learn this if it's halfway through a company's financial year and you want the most up-to-date numbers. On Hypercharts, instead of clicking on Annual, you click on Quarterly and scroll all the way down to Cash Flow again. So because it's quarterly, we simply add up the four most recent quarters. If we add up these last four quarters, which is essentially the last 12 months, we get 4 billion in free cash flow. For Tesla's growth rates, this is where it gets interesting. I already have my own growth rates for Tesla based on over a year of extensive research, which I went into way more detail about in my video, Is Tesla Stock Cheap? In that video, I showed all my Tesla stock analysis and how I arrived at these growth rates. So if you want to see all that research, I highly recommend checking out that video as well. So for the first five years, I have Tesla growing their free cash flow by 55% a year and then slowing down to 15% a year for the following five years. For the discount rate, because Tesla is a stable business with low risk of bankruptcy, I use 10%. For the terminal multiple, with Tesla being an ultra high quality business with huge growth and a long runway, I've assigned a terminal multiple of 30. And finally, for the shares outstanding, we have 990 million shares. All this gives us an intrinsic value calculation of around 1 trillion for the entire business, or around $1,033 a share, which would make the company pretty fairly valued at its current price. So the questions that usually follow are, can you buy a business at its intrinsic value or its fair value? And where is the margin of safety? The answer to that depends on what kind of value investor you are. I'm a Warren Buffett and Nick Sleep style value investor, so I'll try to answer from my perspective. You've probably heard the saying, you never buy a business at its intrinsic value, or that Buffett only buys businesses for 50% of their intrinsic value but that's not really true. This is Buffett in 2007 answering a question about how he thinks about margin of safety and about how he doesn't need them for high quality businesses. Have a listen. We favor the businesses where we really think we know the answer. And therefore, if a business gets to the point where we think the industry in which it operates, the competitive position uh, or anything is, is so chancy, that we can't really come up with a figure, we don't really try to compensate for that sort of thing by having some extra large margin of safety. We really go on, try to go on to something that we understand better. So if we buy something like Seize Candy as a business or Coca-Cola as a stock, uh, we don't think we need a huge margin of safety because we don't think we're going to be wrong about our, uh, about our assumptions in any material way. Uh, what we really want to do is buy a business that's a great business, which means a business is going to earn a high return on capital employed for a very long period of time and where we think the management will treat us right. And we don't have to mark those down a lot uh, when we find those factors. We'd love to find them when they're selling at 40 cents on the dollar, but we will buy those at much closer to a dollar on the dollar. But if we find, if we find something where the competitive aspects are, it's just the nature of the business that you really can't see out five or 10 or 20 years because that's what investing is, is seeing out. You don't get paid for what's already happened. You only get paid for what's going to happen in the future. The past is only useful to you in the extent to which it gives you insights into the future. And sometimes the past doesn't give you any insights into the future. And in other cases, like the stable business that you, uh, you postulated, um, it probably does give you a pretty good guideline as to what's going to happen in the future. And you don't need a huge margin of safety. You, you should have something that you all should, always should feel you're getting a little more than what, uh, what it's worth. And there are times when we've been able to buy wonderful businesses at a quarter of what they're worth. But you don't see those uh, sort of things uh, very often. And does that mean you should sit around and hope they come back for 10 or 15, you know, wait 10 or 15 years? That's not the way we do it. If we can buy good businesses at a reasonable valuation, we're going to keep doing it. The point he's making is if you only own a few high quality businesses that you truly understand and you can assess with confidence, then you don't need a huge margin of safety. 
Over long periods of time, owning high quality businesses that you bought at fair value gives you much better returns than owning a bunch of mediocre businesses that you bought for an excellent price. So the saying that Buffett only buys businesses for 50% of their intrinsic value isn't true and he doesn't use that method anymore. He used to demand a big margin of safety back when he was a cigar butt investor and was buying a large group of businesses. But now he only invests in a small number of businesses that he understands so well that he doesn't need to mark them down to be safe. Now with all that said, you definitely shouldn't overpay for a stock. This is why doing valuations is so important. Otherwise you're just winging it and you don't really know what the business is truly worth. Even though I think Tesla is a high quality business, I wouldn't pay $2,000 or $3,000 a share for it today. Now this only applies to investors who follow this particular style of value investing. Value investors who buy 50 cent dollars always demand a 50% margin of safety. And it works out well for a lot of them. It's just not my style and it's not how Warren Buffett, Monish Pabrai, Nick Sleep and Charlie Munger currently invest either. You should always do what works best for you and suits your tolerance to risk and volatility. If you can ignore a stock dropping 50% over nothing, and you can stay focused on the long term or the destination as Nick Sleep says, then this method works really well. But if you have a low tolerance for risk and you don't have confidence in your ability to analyze and value companies, then it's probably better to have a big margin of safety. Either way, it works. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this one, hit that subscribe button. If you want to download my intrinsic value spreadsheet to use yourself, I'll put a link in the description box below. And if you're still not satisfied, I'll put another video up in the corner that I think you'll find interesting. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments below. I reply to every single question. And as always, this video is not financial advice. Please always do your own research before making any investment decisions. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for all of your support and I'll see you guys in the next one.